Hey guys, it's Dima from Demostech and today we are going to put all your Windows 7, Windows 10 installations, Ubuntu or whatever bootable ISOs you want into this. Okay, so on my left I have downloaded what is called Easy to Boot. I'll give a link in the description of this video uh, so you will be able to download it as well. Now basically what this thing does is enables the USB flash drive to multi-boot. Basically it creates a menu, it creates everything automatically which is very good for us and uh, as you'll see uh, you, the only thing that you need to do is go to your ISO folder uh, to the main menu or if you want to add a Windows you'll have to go to Windows but basically you'll go to main menu and here you will have obviously an empty folder almost uh, so here you should copy your ISOs so uh, you see that I already have uh, pretty many ISOs files here so let's go uh, just uh, take one for example uh, Acronisold so Acronisold is basically uh, one of the uh, uh, programs that we use actually at work for uh, backup and recovery for uh, images, for uh, computers and etc. Now uh, this is the bootable ISO from Acronis and this is just a text that I made that contains the following. Basically it contains title, spacebar, the title that I want to show it in the menu and slash n for a new line to go to the next one. Basically this way you can uh, create a text file that will uh, indicate a name. So for example if uh, the name of the ISO is something like this that you don't want it to show like this uh, on the menu when it boots. So uh, you can create a text file with just CentOS 7 for example and that's what it will show. Uh, another thing to mention is that uh, in my version I uh, did a few settings, uh, uh, one of them basically to show uh, everything in the main menu. So that's why I'm using uh, always the main menu and if I'll add uh, a Windows, so as you will see in a moment, I have here a Windows 10 uh, Pro image, uh, this is a nice O from Microsoft. Uh, basically you can see that you can uh, predefine here some uh, unattended uh, XML files or keys for example. Uh, but again, um, this one is automatically added to the main menu. So let's go ahead to the main menu again and I'll show you where it was added. So uh, basically you see a file called uh, add win to main dot mnu. This is a predefined file that you just need to edit and uh, do stuff correctly. So uh, don't worry you see here a few uh, things uh, already you will uh, not have to edit everything basically uh, what you really need to do so for example this one is, cur is currently the correct one in my situation. Basically what you need to do is uh, grab the one that suits you well for example, for Windows 10 you want uh, to use the same one that goes for Windows 8, for example, etc. And uh, you are going to navigate to the Windows slash Win 10 and here you just uh, need to uh, give the correct name of your ISO file. So uh, this is basically here and same goes here. So two of those places. Uh, that's pretty much it for that one. Uh, basically that's the only change you need to edit or if you are more comfortable you can open again this file uh, and basically um, according to what is in that file rename your ISO. So basically the effect will be the same. Okay so now what we want to do is try and test our menu. So uh, we can go to QM menu test and run it as an admin. Uh, this process doesn't work all the time and when it works it doesn't always work pretty correctly I would say. Now you won't be able to boot actually anything from here but you will be able to see the menu. 
Now, as you can see, I already customized my uh, menu with uh, my logo and uh, the colors and everything. I'll uh, give actually uh, the download link to my own version as well, obviously without the ISO files uh, due to, you know, security and a uh, huge amount of files. But uh, basically, uh, as you can see, this is the menu. So as you can see, those are the ISOs that I have here. Um, and yeah, you can uh, see all the options here. Now this version is uh, new, I already updated my uh, device. It's uh, 1.74 right now. So this is the newest version right now. And basically, uh, as you can see, you can uh, just choose your whatever and put it from uh, it. So let's try, I'm not really sure, I'm pretty sure it won't work, but let's try CentOS 7. Uh, you know what? It might actually be able to boot. Let's try to test this image. And yeah, it pretty much looks like it's stuck. Let's close this up. Okay, so now let's say we want to create our USB drive. Okay, so now that I'm uh, on those files uh, on my computer, now note this thing, you cannot copy actually a USB drive into another USB drive. You need to have all your files on your computer. You cannot uh, have them on your USB like I just tried and it didn't work. You need to be on your computer and then um, actually make another USB. So what you want to do in order to create a new uh, flash drive, so basically on this on the right side you can see my uh, Kingston that I showed in the beginning of the video. It's an empty drive, it's a new one. Basically you want to go to the ISO here, to Docs, make it to be USB drive, and then run as admin make it to be USB drive .cmd. You'll be presented with uh, a short, uh, like, you know, like a dialogue just to uh, choose the correct drive if you, for example, have a few drives. So in my case, uh, as you can see, I have my uh, Corsair Voyager, which is uh, already uh, has the easy to boot. And the new Kingston that you see on the right side that is empty. So we're going to choose number three. As you can see, it's uh, drive number three, the Kingston, and hit enter. Now, it's going to warn us that all partitions on drive three will be destroyed. This will include data, obviously, and everything else. So, uh, in my case, it doesn't have anything, so obviously uh, it is okay. So, I just write Y for yes and hit enter. Now, uh, choose a file system. Uh, if you read carefully, basically, uh, if you want to use files bigger than uh, 4 gigs, you should choose NTFS or M in short. Uh, or if you do not want uh, to use big files, you can always choose FAT32. But I wouldn't say that... Well, basically, uh, here they say that uh, FAT32 is uh, the fastest and more compatible. I wouldn't say that. Actually, NTFS isn't slower at all, so basically you should choose NTFS in almost all the cases. So I'll hit N and enter. And again, I'll be warned that it will erase all the data, so I'll go click OK. And as you can see, the Kingston drive just disappeared. Basically, that means that it's uh, unmounting and starting to uh, format it and do all the magic. Now it's the part of waiting, depends on how many ISOs you have and uh, how big they are, it will take time. So as you can see now it says that uh, format is complete and it's okay and now it's going to copy uh, the actual files. So if I'll go to my computer and enter to the new E2B which was Kingston. You can see that it's already making all the folders and files and uh, in a moment all the files will be here as well. Okay, so it's done copying the files and now uh, in my case there is already a configuration file obviously 
So basically I would want to just skip that and press enter. And that's it, the screen goes uh, actually green, telling that uh, everything is okay, so basically we can press any key to continue. And we can open again the E2B. So as you can see now it has all the files and everything. And if we'll actually uh, run now from here the QMO test, let's try that out. We should get the same menu that we had on our uh, older disk on key. So yeah, you can already see the logo, so basically we are pretty much there. Now, uh, in my case, it took very long time to copy all the ISO files. So I would suggest that you will start with some small uh, ISO files at the beginning and then manually copy just whatever you need, uh, the big ones and everything. So you'll have at least uh, tracking of the copying process and not like I was uh, in the black and I didn't know what is copying or not. So yeah, here's uh, our menu and as you can see everything is here. Everything exactly as it was before. Uh, actually, we can press power off and that's it. So, um, yeah, now that our disk uh, on key is ready, let's go ahead and try that on a real machine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually put this in uh, my laptop, my Dell laptop, and see how it goes. So, uh, let me just put it on the back in the USB. And now we're going to boot the laptop. If I remember correctly, it's F11 on that Dell, F12. And here you can see our menu is pretty bootable. Oh, and yeah, it even beeps when you actually boot it up. So uh, everything is here. Let's go ahead and choose Okay, so just for the test, let me try to launch uh, CentOS 7. As you can see, uh, we can run it in uh, test mode or install. Let's go ahead and test with media and see if it uh, actually runs on uh, from our boot, from our disk on key. So yeah, here you can see that it's starting to boot. Now, uh, this one, uh, this method is actually faster than any CD that uh, you can get. So basically, uh, it's uh, uh, USB 3, so it's even faster than USB 2, which is already faster than a CD. It said we're welcome to CentOS, I didn't read all the things because it was too fast, but... Okay, we have a mouse, and here it is. We have uh, CentOS 7 booted from our disk on key, from our T-boot USB. So now guys, you know how to create a super cool multi-boot USB, as you've just seen. Um, that's it for today. As always, like this video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and when you do, don't forget to mark the V to receive future video updates. As always, share this channel with all your friends, so they will know all that cool stuff as well. See you in the next one! Secret menu. You need to press the delete button and basically at first you need to press set after the delete button and...